Okay, here we are uh, at Wikipedia Woods uh, at the 2020 Outstanding Tree Farm in the state of Maine. It's July the 3rd, uh, and we're out here planting trees, which is not the usual time you would do this, but we just got some seedlings here in the uh, container of red spruce. These are uh, from J.D. Irving's Nursery in New Brunswick. Rob Nelson, forester down in the Crenna area, uh, acquired these for us. He, he gets thousands of them a year and plants them, and we got three trays. These are um, so-called containerized seedlings. There's two, when you're planting trees, there's two kinds. There are these, the containers, where the trees are growing in a, its own little medium. Just like you would buy a seedling from the greenhouse or something, your tomato plant, there's the, the seedling is growing in its little uh, peat pot, essentially, in these plastic trays. There's 67 of them in a, in a, in a tray. <coughs> the other kind are bare root seedlings, which are just uh, raised in the nursery, lifted, and sold uh, without any soil on their root systems. Those are much more um, fragile higher maintenance because you have to make sure to keep these wet. This, because the roots are enclosed in the medium, are more forgiving that way. Uh, in fact, you would not normally plant uh, this time of year. Planting is best done when the, when the trees are just breaking dormancy and the roots are just starting to grow. Um, here we are, I mean, these trees have been, these are grown in a greenhouse environment and are, they appear to have already flushed for the year. So we've actually got two growth spurts, but uh, fortunately, normally, the, if we had uh, been two weeks ago, the soil is very dry, right? This would be an awful time to be planting trees. We've just had a fair amount of rain here in this area of Maine. We could use more, but the soil is wet, and uh, so these, because they're containers, might actually work. Now, we're in a stand that uh, dominated by cedar. It's an old field cedar stand that we've traced, probably traced back to about 1910, 1920. Um, Ron Finn Block, the previous owner, thinned it lightly uh, for poles, even pruned some of the cedar. Uh, we're in a portion of the stand that had a lot of fir. If you notice, the stumps are really rapidly growing fir. This is fertile, old field soil, probably pastured, I imagine. May have even been tilled, but there's no stone wall, so I think it's probably pasture land, which would be consistent with the cedar ecology. Because this area was uh, was heavy to fir and white birch and some aspen, when we harvested all those trees, it was pretty open, and we got sadly we got uh, some blowdown from that awful storm that happened right at Halloween in 2017, right actually during the cutting operation. So we managed to salvage some of the trees. There's a cedar down right there that we didn't get. Uh, there are also trees uh, down from in other directions from up subsequent windstorms. So we have a a patch here that's uh, more open than I would like. Uh, there is some hardwood regeneration that may or may not make it above the deer, um, but because uh, <coughs> we had the opportunity to get these, these are red spruce seedlings uh, from the Irving Nursery, thanks to Rob, uh, we're gonna put in a spray full, sort of in this, uh, I don't know, probably an acre, uh, pretty open. There, there is some residual, but it's, uh, it could use some more for seedlings. There's not a lot of red spruce on this property, so this can be thought of as an enrichment planting, right? We're enriching the species mix from what it was. The spruce in this stand, some of which are here, some of which we harvested were mostly white spruce, which is consistent with this old field nature. So here we go. We're, because these are plugs, normally, of course, these are planted by con contractors who will plant 2,000 or more of these a day bang, 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 and crews of, I don't know, several workers, right? And they, they go down through the, generally a clear-cut block on industrial forest land, probably seven or eight feet apart, uh, sticking these in a hole uh, made with a tool called a dibble that's exactly the size of the plug. So you would just jam the dibble in the ground, make a hole, drop the seedling in it, tamp it, compact the soil around it, and move on. So it's very fast. We don't, I don't have a dibble. We, most of our planting is done with bare root seedlings where you need a shovel or other kind of tool to actually dig a hole. So that's what we're using. So I'll plant one here. When you're planting, uh, I mean, you, the, it's much more, I mean, sometimes you want to adhere to some kind of a tree spacing. You don't want to plant your trees too close. But when you're enrichment planting, you're really just trying to add a species back to the stand 
You're not, it's not like production planting uh, where you're planting up a clear cut and you're going to make a high yield conifer plantation. All we're trying to do here is add the red spruce. So it's much more important to plant the tree in a good, what's called a micro site, where it will thrive. Um, now, uh, this may seem uh, obvious, but uh, nature will tell you where the good microsites are. If you've had a harvest, you look for a big old stump, right, where a good tree grew. And actually, it's also an excellent place to dig a hole because you've got rotten root systems. You don't want to plant in right in rotting wood. But right nearby, this is an old stump that this is much older than our harvest, which would be these fresh stumps. So here's a fresh fir stump. Here's a stump that may be 15 to 20 years old from a tree, a tree that Ron cut uh, years ago. So we're going to plant right nearby here. We want to get down into the mineral soil, right, which is the stable source of moisture. So I'm actually going to dig a little bit of hole here, break up the soil, make a hole, grab a seedling, a plug, and just fill in the soil around the root systems. Be careful to keep the root collar right even with the surface of the ground, maybe slightly lower, but not much. The crucial thing when you're planting a tree is not to have air pockets around the roots, right? Because those will dry out. And so you want to make sure you compact fully. I'm doing this carefully with my hands. If we were, you know, being paid at the typical production rate that industry would pay, we would never make any money doing it this way. We would have a dibble. But we can actually then, so then you seal it in a little bit, and then you do the two finger test, you grab the seedling like this with two fingers, not like this, like this, and if that seedling resists pulling out of the ground, you plant, you've compacted it enough. It, if it comes out, you need to compact it more or even replant it. So I'm okay here. So that's it. Um, you can add, if you were really being fussy, you could put down a brush blanket around this to kill all the weeds. Um, what we do typically when we plant, it's so easy if you have a GPS unit, just to hit mark, enter, and now you have a record of where that tree is within a couple of meters. So when you're done, you can go back and upload this waypoint file and see exactly on your land where you've planted your trees and keep track of them. We'll probably want to do that here, right? Because there'll be, if the deer don't eat up all the hardwoods, we'll have competition. We might want to come back and free this tree from uh, competition from hardwoods or maybe some fur seedlings. But, so that's it. We'll stay tuned. We're going to uh, plant uh, about 67 trees here.